Hi, Tiffany. Welcome back to my bonfire. Today's a little bit different. Today we're doing something a little bit crazy. Today we're going to be talking about just one book, single book review. And by book review, I mean evisceration. Okay, when I say book review, what I mean is a roast. I mean a rant. I want, by the end of this, for us to have something in motion. I want us, at the end of this, to understand what we're gonna do next, okay? I want us, at the end of this, to realize that we have been oppressed. We, at the end of this, are going to define a new working class, a working class of people who hate Colleen Hoover. That's my thesis. This video is, in a way, my own manifesto. I'm basically like Karl Marx, but instead of like thinking about communism, I'm thinking about how we can eliminate Colleen Hoover from the publishing world. I'm really excited to talk to you about this book today. Listen, Tiffany, I don't even know where to start. I read this book knowing that I was gonna film this video. I read it knowing what was gonna happen. And what happened, Tiffany, in case you don't know, is I absolutely hated it. <laughs> the hard part is like actually sitting down and thinking, what am I gonna say about this piece of fiction? What am I gonna say about this piece of media that has absolutely rotted my brain? Hmm? It's bad. No shit. I'm gonna spoil this book for you because I read it so you don't have to. And just so you know also, like that makes me a really good person. I literally saved you. I want you to know that, first of all. Second of all, I left this book, this reading experience, more confused. But in case you don't know, what It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover is about it's about this girl. Her name is Lily. The book begins with Lily at a funeral. And Lily is a girly pop. Lily is not like other girls. Lily's different because Lily, her father is dead. And she's supposed to get up there and say a little speechy speech about her father. She gets up there and she says, here's a list of things I liked about my dad. And then Lily proceeds to remain completely silent, insinuating that there is nothing good about her father. Her father used to be like really physically, emotionally, spiritually, economically abusive to Lily and her mom. Lily is like, so glad your dad hate you. You're a piece of shit. You beat women. That's such a small dick thing. And like, can't believe that you're the person who's like, who I'm supposed to call father. I'm not gonna do it. I hate you. That's what she's like thinking in her head. But everybody is like, oh my God, Lily is so upset about her father and his death. <laughs> It completely gets misinterpreted, which like just tells me that like she's not very good at coming through with a plan. Because if your plan was to tell everyone that you hate your father and you have no good things to say about him, why wouldn't you make that abundantly clear? Why wouldn't... Anyway, I'm already so angry and it's not even... We're not even like a little bit into the book. We're like literally a page in and I'm so angry. Lily goes home. She goes to like a rooftop and she's sitting on the rooftop thinking about her fucking stupid life or whatever. And then this dude shows up. He starts kicking over chairs and shit. He starts, he starts having a little temper tantrum thinking that he's alone. And Lily is like, hey, my dude, I am here also. And then rather than like him being embarrassed or anything, he's like not. So that was like a red flag. <laughs> because you're fucking 36 years old and you're throwing a fucking temper tantrum. Get it together. This dude's name is like Wrath or no, Ryle. His name is Ryle, which also, can I say? A stupid name. It's a stupid fucking name. Also, since we're talking about stupid fucking names, let's talk about Lily's name. Lily is named Lily. Her last name is Bloom. Lily Bloom. Colleen came up with a stupid fucking name and she thought to herself, what should her occupation be? I know, florist. Colleen, Colleen, I just want you to know from the bottom of my heart that I think you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> Cause that's the stupidest thing I've ever fucking heard. And the fact that it's kind of like this joke in the book where like the main character is like, yeah, my name is Lily Bloom and I'm a florist. Uh, excuse me, sir, do you mind? It's like not a joke. It's not a joke. I'm not, I'm not laughing. I'm laughing because it's so fucking stupid. This dude, Ryle, is like on the building or whatever. And they sit down, they're sitting next to each other. They're talking because they both apparently have like really hard days or whatever. Ryle is like, I am a doctor and like, I just lost a child 
in such a hurry. And then Lily is like, oh my God, he's a doctor. Uh. And then Lily is like, my dad is dead. And I'm like, glad, I'm happy about it, blah, 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 blah. They start talking about like deeper stuff, right? I think they call it like the simple truth or like my truth or whatever, who cares? They're being like, oh my gosh, like, you know what my simple truth is? I'm lonely or whatever. Like they're being vulnerable in some way. And then Ryle, <laughs> this is like five pages into the book, just so you know as well, five fucking pages in. Ryle then is like, you know what? my simple truth is you know what my dark truth is lily bloom and then he's like what is it ryle and ryle says i want to fuck you what do you mean what do you mean colleen i just i just want to talk colleen okay i just want to fucking talk because why in the name of Lucifer does this man, so early on in the book, he wants to have sexual intercourse with Lily Bloom. Also, can I just ask this simple question? I don't wanna be controversial, but I do wanna be brave. And so I need to ask this question. Who wants men like this? Raise your hands, don't be shy, girls. Who wants them? Because it's not me. <laughs> It's not me, and I don't think it's any other women that I personally know, although most of the girls I know are actually like super gay, but I can't imagine a world where a woman is like out in the universe, living her life, her dream, her father is fucking dead, this man just literally killed a child, <laughs> and then the most natural thing to happen next is that the man who is emotionally distraught apparently and has just met this woman minutes ago lets the intrusive thought win and lets her know that he wants to sexually violate her colleen colleen are you brain dead this is what has me so confused about this book about colleen hoover just in general it's like who was reading her books who is it it's not me. I mean, it is me because I literally, I did read this. <laughs> Who is reading them and enjoying them and giving this woman money? Because this now has a film and the fact that it has a film, it should be illegal. It should be classified as a hate crime against women, against men. Because like, what are the chances? You or your friends or your father or your mother could watch that movie or read this book and nobody's talking about it. I don't understand. Who is reading these books? I don't understand how Colleen has fans. I don't know how she's making money. Reading this book, I felt as if I was being lobotomized. Do you understand what I'm saying? I said, I read this book and felt as though Colleen herself was sawing into my skull and scooping out my brain with a fucking tablespoon, with a melon baller, my dude. Can I just say, and like, listen, Colleen, I don't wanna be mean. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lie, I do wanna be mean. The writing style. Girly pop, it's literally embarrassing. <laughs> it's literally embarrassing because it's like fourth grade comprehension. The writing is so simplistic and I feel like maybe that's part of it. This is what I imagine, Tiffany, if I'm being honest with you, this is what I think is going on. <laughs> I think Colleen Hoover is actually not as stupid as we all kind of want her to be. I think Colleen purposefully writes these books horribly, like with like the most simplistic fucking writing that she can manage or maybe she's just a bad writer she might just be a bad writer i don't fucking know therefore the book is then accessible to literally anyone and everyone there's nothing hard to read about this it's just complete dog shit my theory is that these books are written for people who don't read books kind of gives me that like james patterson vibe people who read james patterson books i don't think you're a book reader i feel like you don't count <laughs> If you like Colleen Hoover books, you don't count. Like, <laughs> I don't want to be a gatekeeper, but at the same time, like, I have to be. <laughs> it's so bad. Her and Ryle meet. She rejects his offer of copulation. Good for her. Feminism. She's opening up her, like, floral shop. Because, again, she's Lily Bloom. And so she's, like, doing it. And this girl walks in. And she's like, I want to help you with your flower shop or whatever. Okay, fine. So, like, she hires this random girl who she just met off the fucking street. And guess what, Tiffany? Guess who this girl is? This girl is Ryle's sister. Of course she is. Because that makes sense. And then, of course, she also, again, meets Ryle. And Ryle, once again, is just so dreamy. So dreamboat. He's like hey, we met again and I still wanna fuck you. Let me ask this question and I want you, Tiffany, to be so expeditiously, so expectantly honest with me. Who wants that? Who's asking for this content? Cause I can't imagine a woman who had more than two brain cells 
enjoying this book. Specifically like Ryle's character. I can't imagine a woman who has eyes, who has taste, touch, and yet for some reason there's a fucking movie. Anyway, I should also mention that while all of this is happening, there's also this like a second plot thing where it's like these journal entries <laughs> which have not aged well. <laughs> These journal entries are from when she was like a teenager. I think she also like introduces them as like that time I lost my virginity to like a homeless person. <laughs> These letters are all um, to a woman named Ellen DeGeneres. In this work of fiction, Lily Bloom, our main character, when she's a teenager, she writes letters to Ellen DeGeneres. Talks about how she just loves her show. <laughs> And how she loves how Ellen dances and she's so nice. <laughs> it's absolutely crazy. It's absolutely insane. And Colleen, I just imagine that she was like, oh my God, people are gonna love this. People love Ellen. <laughs> so she's writing all of these things. She's talking about this like kid who like kind of smells. <laughs> I'm not even joking. She's like, this kid is fucking stinky as fuck. <laughs> so she invites this kid to shower at her place because she finds out that he's like homeless, that he's like staying in this like abandoned house that's like across the street from her house. She feels bad for him. And so she's like, that's why you fucking stink. It's because you're not showering. They form a friendship. And then also like this like weird relationship. Honestly, I kind of shipped her with this other guy. I kind of also think that this guy was way too good for her. But anyway, fast forward, we're in the present. Long story short, Ryle and Lily start dating. Thank God, I, I was so worried. I also mention that their relationship, it's like a cliche after another cliche. He's like ultra sexual, whatever, with her. And he's like, I wanna fuck you or whatever. Lily is like, fine, I guess we can fuck. But like, just so you know, once you have it once, you're gonna never wanna give it up. Literally, if anyone ever said that to me, I no longer want sexual intercourse with you. You're awful. I hate you so much. I don't wish anything good for you. But she says that and Ryle is like, mm, whatever, it's true. So like Ryle the whole time before is like, I don't do relationships. I don't do girlfriends, blah, blah, blah. And then he has sex with Lily and he's like, I do do girlfriends. I do do relationships. Like, I get it. It's like a fantasy. It's like, <laughs> it's like part of the romance trope. It's part of the genre. However, it's just like so overdone. Lily finds out that her old boyfriend, the one that she lost her virginity to, works at this restaurant. And so she's like, oh my God, it's him or whatever. And he's like, also probably like really hot. I imagine that he was really hot. She's like, oh my God, it's you. And he's like, oh my God, it's you. And so he also is now like, wait a minute, Lily. I want to like be with Lily fucking Bloom, the florist. Cause that's a thing that makes sense in this fucking universe. It doesn't make sense. Also, can I just say, and I know that this video is just chaotic. The fact that Lily and honestly a lot of different romance protagonists has like no friends. She has like no fucking friends. The beginning of the book she meets Ryle's sister. They become besties. We don't know about anybody else in her life. We don't know about anyone other than the fact that she's friends with Ryle's sister. Where are her fucking friends? Colleen Hoover wrote about a fucking loner who decides to center her life around men. In this economy, there's no fucking way. There's no fucking way. It's like literally sad when you think about it. Cause it's like, okay, cool. You've got Ryle and this other guy like pining after you. Where are the girls? Where are your friends? Ryle's sister is like, we're gonna go out for dinner to celebrate the fact that I'm like pregnant or something. Who fucking cares? I don't remember. <laughs> Ryle's sister is like, we're gonna go to this one place. And it happens to be the restaurant that her old homeless boyfriend works at slash owns. Our main character, Lily Bloom. She's like, I don't want to go there. We can't go there. And they're like, too bad, Lily. We're going there. Don't be fucking weird. But she doesn't want to go because she doesn't want Ryle to meet this guy. Suspicious. That's so fucking suspicious. What do you mean? What do you mean? Is this man not 30 fucking seven years old? Is this man not a fully formed fucking human being capable of emotional regulation? What do you mean? <sighs> anyway, so then they go to the restaurant. Oh. They end up meeting. What's his face and the other guy end up meeting. And like, I forget what happened. I just referred to the text. I did miss something. So before they go out to this restaurant, before Ryle and old homeless boyfriend meet, Ryle ends up, I think like hitting Lily or like throwing her down some stairs. Either way, it's a DV situation. This is why you fucking suck. Okay, this is why you fucking suck. 
and everybody knows it. It's not like an inherently bad thing that there is domestic violence represented in the book. What's fucked is the way that it's done. What's fucked, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, by the way, if you don't fucking like my opinion, you can literally suck my dick. I don't care. What's fucked is that Colleen does everything in her power to latch our main character to Ryle. She does everything in her power to make sure that Lily and Ryle are connected by a fucking chain. It's crazy. So Ryle ends up hurting Lily. And she has like a little mark on her face, like a little thing on her eye. <laughs> so fun. It's so cute. She goes out to the restaurant with them or whatever. Her ex-homeless boyfriend, who's no longer homeless and is instead hot and has like a restaurant of his own, sees her, sees her eye, puts two and fucking two together like a fucking mathematician. Is like, wait a minute, your boyfriend is abusive. And Lily is like, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, he's not. He's like a really good guy. And then Ryle and Lily talk and Ryle is like, did he say anything about our fight? Our fight? Our fight? That's a crazy way to say it. But anyway, let's talk about the situation. Ryle, full ass grown adult, grabs something out of like the oven without a pot holder. The guy was a red flag from the fucking start, but this is like the first red flag, I think, to like Lily. He like burns his hand because he's a fucking idiot. He starts putting his hand un underneath like cold water, swearing and muttering, and Lily is like in the corner, kind of drunk, kind of like giggling to herself. She's just giggling, gaggling, giggling, gaggling about the situation because she's like, this is ridiculous. It says, and I quote, I'm still laughing as I lean over to get a look at Ryle's hand. I hope he didn't hurt it too bad. I'm instantly not laughing anymore. I'm on the floor, my hand pressed against the corner of my eye. In a matter of one second, Ryle's arm came out of nowhere and slammed against me, knocking me backwards. There was enough force behind it to knock me off balance. When I lost my footing, I hit my face on one of the cabinet door handles as I came down. Pain shoots through the corner of my eye right near my temple then i feel the weight heaviness follows and it presses down on every part of me so much gravity pushing down on my emotions everything shatters my tears my heart my laughter my soul shattered like broken glass raining down on me this is when ryle after assaulting his girlfriend says god damn it lily it's not funny this hand is my fucking career i <laughs> i can't imagine going into this book this novel entitled It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover, expecting a pinky, pokey, fun, cutesy, dootsy, little demure romance. And then instead being hit with the fact the love interest is physically abusive. Can you imagine, Tiffany? Also, how absolutely fucking embarrassing is it to be like, this hand is my career. I think I would, I think I would laugh more. And then, okay, so after he says like, this hand is my career or whatever, she doesn't look at him. She's just like in shock because she just got like slapped, like a hit in the face by uh, her partner. And then all of a sudden he's like, Lily, no, oh God, Lily, I'm so sorry. Mm, Lily, I'm so sorry. Like, he basically does like an Uno reverse he said, let me activate my trap card. Disgusting. That happens. And then they go to dinner or whatever. Lily is like, you know what? He hit me. And like, that's like definitely like number one red flag for me because my dad was physically abusive. You remember how she fucking hates her dad because her dad was physically abusive? Guess what? She's like, I'm just going to stick it out because it'll never happen again. It's a one-time thing. Me and Ryle, we have something special. We have something different. It's different. Literally reading this book, I wanted to kill myself. I was like, can this get worse? It did. It literally did. After they get home, after this like dinner thing, Ryle is like, I'm insecure and I need you to comfort me. Even though yesterday I gave you a fucking black eye, but I need comfort because I think you're fucking this random homeless guy. And Lily is like, I only want to be with you. I don't even like that guy. Like we literally barely know each other now. Like we're both adults. It's been 20 fucking years. Like chill, it's fine. I think the ex homeless boyfriend, his name is Atlas, which again, kind of a stupid name. Not as bad as Ryle, but not great. What's crazy is that like after that whole thing, the next day Atlas comes and he's like, just wanted to apologize or whatever and say, I'm sorry. And here's like a gift or whatever. And she's like, no, I don't want to see you, blah, 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 blah. Because Ryle is a jealous little bitch. Like imagine being in love with someone and rather than them understanding that like 
if you were gonna cheat, you were probably just gonna cheat. They're like, you need to comfort me because I'm a little piss baby. Ryle finds more reasons to not trust Lily because he's like, you and Atlas are close. You and Atlas like are friends or whatever. She's like, no, that's like literally not reality. And he's like, that's reality. That's what's happening. And I know it because he left you this fucking voicemail because in that moment he like throws her phone and she's thinking either he's gonna leave me or he's gonna fucking hurt me. Long story short, Ryle gets up to leave. Lily runs after him, but rather than him stopping or anything like that, what he does is he pushes her down the fucking stairs. He grabs my wrists and pushes me away from him. And then she wakes up and she's like, what the fuck happened? And Ryle is like, no, 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 be careful. You're hurt, be careful. And we know as the reader, she's hurt because of you. She's hurt because you fucking pushed her like a psychopath. So basically Lily is like, okay, that's strike two. You hit me and now you've pushed me down the fucking stairs. That's crazy. Ryle is like, hey, I'm in pain. <laughs> I'm really hurt because I think you're dating Atlas, that your ex-homeless boyfriend. I'm in pain. He literally says, and I quote, it hurts so much, Lily. I love you so much. This is like right after he pushed her fucking down the stairs. At this point, I think she does leave him. And like, I cannot tell you the absolute like butt clenching fear I was in, okay? Where I was like, this woman is gonna stay. This woman, is, this woman is gonna stay with this man. She doesn't, she leaves. However, Colleen, being a fucking sadist, being a fucking weirdo, is like, I do need her though to be linked to this man forever and for all time, okay? I need that. Um, so guess what? Lily is pregnant <laughs> with Ryle's child, with a child belonging to Ryle. So this woman is now linked genetically biologically, economically, spiritually, to this man who abuses her. <laughs> That's so fun. And then rather than it being like a thing of like, oh, I'm pregnant, let me get like a little abortion borsh. Of course, that's not gonna happen because this is Colleen Hoover. This woman has to make sure that um, everything sucks. Let me be honest with you, Tiffany, let me be honest. I didn't like read like the last 10 minutes of the book. Um, because I just could not, I, I didn't care because it was like, oh, Lily is pregnant. Lily gave birth. They're gonna co-parent. They're chill. Everything's fine. What I want to make abundantly clear to you, Tiffany, is that like, I read horror novels. I'm a horror girly. I love thrillers, etc. This is on par with like a horror novel. Okay. This is like, this is the kind of shit that is like meant to scare women into not dating men. There has never been a more clear cut answer to not date men. If you're on the fence, if you're on the fence about men and whether you should be with them romantically and sexually, I would say read this book, give it a shot. Cause I'm convinced. I don't think that was Colleen's intention. I think Colleen is like, hey girly pops, settle. <laughs> I think Colleen is an evil person who does evil things, um, including write books like this. I hate you, Colleen. Um, but I do think that it's very good birth control. I think it's I think it's like effective in that way. Um, and we do have to give credit where it's due. Thank you so much, Colleen, for this book because I myself now vow to never let a man touch me ever again. <laughs> because I don't want anything to do with anything that happened in this book, including the heterosexuality. So I'm just gonna say no in that way. It's kind of like a cautionary tale where it's like, hey girl, you wanna read about love? Read about this instead. Be afraid forever. <laughs> so fun. I hate that I read this, I'll never get that time back. There must be a society of people who are being like lobotomized. And then those lobotomized people are buying her books. Like that's the only way I can explain it. 
my friends, my family, my familia. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. As unhinged as it fucking is and was, um, let me know if you have any other books that you want me to kind of like do this for, where I just basically like tell you what happened and like how much I hated it or whatever. <laughs> let me know. Um, thank you so much for being here. Don't forget to hit subscribe because we talk about spooky shit, talk about creepy shit, talk about how Colleen Uber should get teleporting me. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in my next one. Bye. Goodbye, Tiffany. Thank you so much. You're stunning. You're gorgeous. Goodbye. You're stunning and gorgeous and beautiful and you look like Linda Evangelista. Goodbye. Through the night and morning When the rain is pouring You're the one I'm calling You're my escape from my darkest days And when the sun is shining